Hey there, all you good people. I'm Joe from Joe's Computer Museum. Today the K-Pro is back, but with a twist. I'll ditch the floppies and go with something much more reliable. Warm up the CRT, it's time for another episode. I mentioned on part 3 of my K-Pro restoration that you could upgrade this beast to Flash. I want to give a shout out to subscriber Stephen Mitchell who asked if I could show how that's done, so I'll do a quick video today of that. All you need is a floppy drive emulator. I use the HXC 2001 Revision F, link in the description. Basically you take out the floppy drives, throw in the emulator, configure it, give it disk images and you're good to go. Let's dig in. First it pays to read the manual. There are software settings, configuration files, and dip switches to deal with, so you'll want to read the manual to understand how the device is supposed to function. The unit I picked up is the Revision F, as it fits the K-Pro's physical requirements best. It's like a blend of the slim version and the original, and you have to read both manuals to get all the information you need to configure it. Using the software is straightforward. Install it, feed it a disk image, convert it to the native emulator format, put it on the SD card, and you're set. You configure the emulator itself by using the same software and saving the config file to the root of your SD card. Using the out-of-box dip switch settings and a known working image, the device worked for me perfectly on the first try. I found it a bit cumbersome to create a good blank disk image. The software doesn't know the native K-Pro format, so you have to figure out how to set it up. If you don't want to fiddle with the software, it's easier to take a known working emulator image, mount it on the K-Pro, format it, rename it, then save it somewhere as your master blank image. Next time you need a new image, just copy, paste it, rename it, and you're set. If you're the patient type, you can use the built-in track analyzer tool to analyze an existing disk image and glean the proper formatting information from that. For the K-Pro 1, I did the hard work for you, and I'll show the correct format parameters here. This emulator supports one and two drive modes. Using two drive mode requires setting the dip switches. Note that you need to use shoe guard settings, not IBM or twisted cable settings, since the K-Pro 1 uses standard shoe guard signaling. Installing the device is simple. You'll likely need to use an IBM floppy cable to get the IDC connector on the floppy side. This is because the original cable has IDC on the board side and a card edge connector on the floppy side. You'll want to ensure that you have the emulator connected before the twist. You'll also need a Molex to floppy power adapter. Another helpful item is a 3.5 inch to 5.25 inch bay adapter, so you can mount it inside the machine. It's also helpful to have some kind of blank to fill up the other hole, or you can keep your original floppy drive in there. Once you're all hooked up, just power it up and go. You can use the front panel buttons to browse the SD card and select a floppy image for both drives on the fly. Well, there you have it, another way to convert unreliable magnetic media to super reliable flash media. And it doesn't just work on the K-Pro, it'll work on almost any device that requires a 34-pin floppy drive. Well, that's all for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button or subscribe, and remember, 8 bits are all you need. I got this K-Pro in 2007 or 2008 or so. Uh, a local guy called into our computer shop and uh, he was looking to get rid of some old computers wondering if we recycled computers. And I happened to ask him so what kind of computer it was because, you know, I'm always on the lookout for something. Uh, so when you skip the hardware, just click that thing there to jump ahead. So let's talk about the backup process. K-Pros use pretty standard floppy technology, so we can use a DOS or Windows PC to copy and restore disk images. All you need is the right imaging software, the right hardware, and some luck.